the first person that came up with the concept of prediction market is Robin Henson. He talked about it in Futarchy. Right? So tell us a little bit about Futarchy, maybe what its limitations might be. Sure, so I just mentioned that one application of prediction markets is also governance. And yeah, Robin Henson described the concept of Futaki, which is which allows to use prediction markets for governance. And yeah, the the bottom line of prediction markets is that you um, you should vote on values, but uh, bet on beliefs. Mm -hmm. And the way how, or if you think about current governance models. For example, um, like majority voting or how currently our, our governance works, representative uh, democracy or direct democracy, dictatorship, <laughs> you name it. Um, then there's always the issue that those that are uh, in power, those that are making decisions on behalf of others, they're not really being held responsible for their decision. Yeah. Like before an election, uh, they promise you everything. After the election, they can do anything, but probably not exactly what they promised to do so. That yeah, reminds me of a particular and, protocol. But and then they're not really being held responsible for what they actually did. And yeah, Futaki is a way to trying to solve this problem with prediction markets. And the way it works can be simply described giving an example and the canonical example we like to use is uh, governance within a company and in a company you might want to for example decide on if you want to hire or if you want to fire the CEO and if you want to solve this using prediction markets then you first have to understand um, what is representing the success of your company. And for companies, this could, for example, be the, the stock price of the company. And now you want to evaluate how a decision has an impact on the stock price. And in case of the fire the CEO example, what you can do is you can have two prediction markets. One prediction market predicting the value of the stock price at let's say the end of 2018 under the assumption that we are going to fire the CEO and the other prediction market um, would basically predict what is the stock price under the assumption that we don't fire the CEO and now everyone can participate in those prediction markets and finally you have a deadline and when the deadline for the decision is is hit then we decide on if you fire the CEO or not based on the prediction market which is predicting the higher stock price. And the reason why this is useful is because uh, now you have skin in the game if you want to participate in this, uh, in this decision. Yeah, if you want to have influence, then you have to uh, basically go long on the market like that you think should be uh, implemented. Let's say if you want to fire the CEO, then you have to predict a very high stock price under the assumption that the CEO was fired. But if it turns out that the stock price really falls after the CEO got fired, then you lose money because you predicted the opposite. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's, that's really uh, useful because now if you want to do have influence, you have to have skin in the game, you have to have something at stake that you might lose in case uh, your reasoning was wrong. And we, th th we, we believe this is a fundamental improvement over the other, other possibilities to do voting. One of the prerequisites for uh, believing in prediction market seems to be efficient market theory. Yeah, right. Yeah, so you have, to, you have to assume that all information is it's really there. Yeah, you have to assume that at least, uh, so some people call prediction markets uh, or connected to like crowdsourced wisdom mm -hmm. or wisdom of the crowd. Yeah. But that's not necessarily the case uh, because the assumption is that not necessarily everyone knows about the particular outcome, but everyone's contributing to the market and adding liquidity, which is then creating an incentive for those that actually have knowledge to participate. Mm. So it's not really wisdom of the crowd, it's wisdom 
of a few, but the crowd is setting the incentive for the few to participate.